Amen. So I want to see how the Lord will help us to quickly rush through this before we go to the next thing on the agenda. Thank you. The gospel. Now, the first thing I want us to understand is this. The gospel of Christ must move. Are you with me? The gospel of Christ must what? The gospel of Christ must move. So if God's gospel must move, then the question is, how will it move? Amen. If the gospel of Christ must move, the question we ask ourselves is what? How will it move? So if God's gospel must move, then it will move through your legs. Are you there? It will fly through you. Are you with me? So therefore, it means that if you don't move, the gospel will not what? The gospel will not what? The gospel will not move. So it is as we move that the gospel moves. Are you getting what I'm saying? How God moved the gospel in the Bible days is by moving the disciples. So everywhere they go to, you find what? The gospel there. Are you with me? So the gospel must move. And if it must move, it must move through who? Through us. Hallelujah. So you can see that in um, Luke chapter 9 verse 6. Because of time, I will just read from here. Luke chapter 9 verse 6. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Praise the Lord. So they moved. And as they moved, the gospel what? Moved. So if you are a child of God, there are many things the Lord will give to you. Now these things is beyond. These things are beyond you. For instance, if you are a child of the Lord and God is sending you abroad, what is he sending abroad? Huh? That's the gospel. So anytime God increases you, he does that with the aim of increasing the gospel. If he gives you a job, he is giving you because he wants the gospel to get there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Before I continue, can we... Can we celebrate our mommy in our presence? That's, um, uh, I used to say Pastor Kelvin. So that's Pastor Kelvin's mom. Can we celebrate her? God bless you, ma. Hallelujah. Then another point I want us to note is this. The gospel is a person. The gospel is a what? The gospel is a person. And his name is Jesus. The gospel is a person and his name is who? His name is Jesus. So what we are preaching is not it. It's him. So you don't preach it. You what? You preach him. Because the gospel is a person. That's why the gospel will not be powerful in your mouth. Amen. Sorry. The gospel will not be powerful in your mouth if you don't know the person of Jesus. Are you with me? It will not be powerful in your mouth if you don't know who? The person of Jesus. Praise the Lord. That, you know, you can still find that in Luke chapter 9, you know, verse 6. You can still see that there. And that I want us to notice this. Bodily healing is an additional advantage to the gospel. Are you there? Bodily healing is what? An additional advantage to what? To the gospel. It is not everything the gospel entails, but it is part of it. It is what? It is part of it. Praise the Lord. Look at that Luke chapter 9 verse 6 again. The Bible says, And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel, and what? Healing everywhere. Praise the Lord. The Bible said they were doing what? They were healing everywhere. Meaning that when you bring the gospel to a place, what have you brought to that place? healing if the gospel is of christ then as you preach it you are giving jesus an opportunity to touch the people are you getting what i'm saying and in touching the people there will be what healing both spiritually and what physically 
So I pray for you that the healing hand of the Lord will come upon you in the name of Jesus. Number seven. The gospel has opposition. The gospel does what? The gospel has opposition. Luke chapter 20 verse 1. And it came to pass that one of those days as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders. The Bible says they came what? They came upon him. What does it mean to come upon a person? It means they came to attack him. Are you with me? To come upon is to come against. So Jesus was preaching the gospel and they came upon him. They came against him. So the gospel has what? Opposition. So that you are preaching and your message is being opposed. That you are preaching and that message is facing great opposition does not mean God is not involved. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must understand that the gospel you have is what? It has what? Opposition. If what you are saying is the truth, then not everybody will like it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Tell your partner, if what you are saying is the truth, then not everybody will like it. Hallelujah. And another thing we want, I want us to notice this. A Christian that prays without ceasing but does not preach without ceasing is not living a balanced life. If you pray without ceasing and you don't preach without ceasing, then what? Your Christianity is not what? Is not balanced. So as you pray always, you are supposed to what? Preach always. Pray without ceasing and also what? Preach without ceasing. Let's check the Bible to, to buttress that. Acts chapter 14 verse 7. Don't worry, I will read from here because of time. Acts chapter 14 verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. That means everywhere they go to, they do what? They preach the gospel. The apostles were so focused on God that even in their prison, they were still what? Preaching. Their problems could not stop them from preaching because it has become to them their life. It has become what? Their life. As you are seated here, your life is here with you. Am I right? So when something becomes your life, that thing becomes part of you. So God expects the gospel to become a part of you. Everywhere you go to, the gospel must go there. If you get a phone today and you want to post online, the gospel must be seen in that post. Are you getting what I'm saying? If the gospel is not part of your plan, Jesus is not part of your plan. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you add the gospel to your plan, then you have what? Added Jesus to your boats. You have added Jesus to your life. Are you with me? Another point I want us to notice is this. Their mouth is primarily created for the gospel. If it is not transmitting the gospel, then it is doing the wrong thing. Acts 15 verse 7. Your mouth is primarily created for what? For the gospel. Not for gossip, but for what? The gospel. The gospel. So a mouth that is not constantly you know sharing the gospel a mouth that is not constantly speaking the gospel is doing what the wrong thing are you with me let's look at what the bible says acts 15 verse 7 and when there had been much disputing peter rose up and said unto them men and brethren you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth. Someone said by my mouth. Look at what the Bible is saying here. He said by my mouth. This is Peter talking here. He said the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word, the word of the gospel and believe. 
God has ordained that by your mouth the unsaved should be saved. He has ordained that by your mouth the Gentiles, meaning the unbelievers, should hear the gospel and what? And believe. Your words will not profit God if it is not the gospel. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. Another thing I want us to notice this. The gospel is the habit of a preacher. The gospel is what? Not just a preacher now. The gospel is the habit of a true Christian. When you become a true child of God, the gospel becomes your habit. Let's check the scripture. You see what I'm saying now? Romans chapter 2 verse 16. It says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my what? Gospel. When I saw this verse, and the Lord showed me, he said, according to my gospel, as revealed by Paul here, means according to my habits. Are you getting what I'm saying? According to what? My habits. Each time I come to you, are you getting what I'm saying? If the devil successfully replaces the gospel with gossip, then you are lost. Are you there? The moment the devil successfully takes away gospel from your mouth and he replaces it with gossip, you are finished. So anytime you open your mouth now, you want to talk about another person. Jesus is there, you are not revealing him. That means your mouth is wasting. Your mouth is not even fulfilling purpose. Are you with me? Let me show you a secret. Are you with me? Your mouth has a purpose. Amen. Some people are finding it hard to write what I'm saying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. God gave you mouth for what? The gospel. Your hands are for what? The gospel. Your legs are for what? The gospel. Why? Because the gospel will move through them. Your ghost, the gospel will reach out to others through your mouth, through your hands. Your ears too becomes a tool for the gospel. Until every part of you starts responding to the gospel, you are not living a purposeful life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Another point I want you to notice this. The gospel is to be obeyed. The gospel is what? Yes. The gospel is to be obeyed. Remember I told you that the gospel is a person. And his name is who? Jesus. So disobeying the gospel makes you a stranger. Not everybody is familiar to God. There are people that God, the one who created them, did not know them. Are you there? That's it. Who is God to you? Is he a creator or a father? Generally to God, everybody, you know, generally, to everybody, God is a creator. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are saved or unsaved, he created you, so he's a creator. But salvation is what makes God a father to you. Are you there? Salvation brings you to that point where you say, my God. It becomes my God. The only begotten became what? The first begotten. Because many have also been begotten now. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we have become the beloved. The gospel contains the law of God. Reveals the law of God. So when you hear it, you have to what? Obey it. It contains the instructions of God that must be obeyed. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can see that in Romans chapter 10, verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as he has said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Praise the Lord. 
not obeying the gospel makes you a what a stranger tell your neighbor not obeying the gospel makes you a stranger hallelujah now look at this another point is this when god looks at people who are fighting the preacher okay let me just explain to you look at me how many of you believe that okay have you read the bible before and you see god referring to some people as his enemies have you seen that before in the bible my enemies the enemies of god now who are the enemies of god huh look at this naturally because of the 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 sovereignty of god a man that is sovereign does not really have enemies do you know why because in his sovereignty he can destroy a whole territory and nothing will happen so you can't say you are his enemies once you just say it, you are dead i get what i'm saying but the reason god has enemies is because of his children so this is the formula now the moment you become an enemy to any of his children you have become his enemy i get what i'm saying now let's say the scripture there's something i want to explain here romans 11 28 as concerning the gospel they are enemies for your sakes but as touching the election they are beloved for the servant's sake for the for the father's sake look at this as concerning the gospel they are what they are enemies for what for your sake but as touching the election they are beloved for the father's sake look at this they are enemies for whose sake your sake can i see that so they became the enemy of god because they they were against you so everyone that is against the children of god is an enemy to god but that same enemy to god that same person that is an enemy to god can also become his beloved by election that's why not all your enemies will die because some of them will become his beloved by election and this one is now for the father's sake for your sake are you catching what i'm saying now because of you they became god's enemy but those people you see as enemy now some of them will be elected by grace so for the father's sake now they will become what a beloved so if god has enemy why is he having the enemies because of who we his children to preach the gospel is to name christ to preach the gospel is to name christ that is to make him known are you there to what to make him known romans chapter 15 verse 20 yeah so ye so have i strived to preach the gospel not where christ was named lest i should build upon what another man's what foundation praise the lord anytime you preach the gospel what are you doing you are naming christ you are making christ known but you can build on another man's foundation which is wrong i think that's what i'm saying gospel is not smashing gospel is building are you there if what you are doing is snatching you are not preaching the gospel are you there somebody is already standing but you are enticing the person to follow you are you there so that you can have more people to you it's not about growth it's about uh, followership just to have bodyguards spiritual bodyguards are you getting what i'm saying that is not it if you truly have the gospel take it to the unsaved take it to those that are not growing if they grow it means what you have is the truth i get what i'm saying look at this let me teach you something how to test the truth the true tests of truth is growth are you there the true test of truth is what is growth if i teach you the truth the natural response you have is what growth are you getting what i'm saying 
if what i'm teaching you is the truth you should what grow because naturally growth is tied to the truth if we will grow we will grow by the truth are you there the absence of the truth defines the absence of what of growth are you there faith comes by hearing and what hearing the word of god what are you hearing the truth it has to be the truth please take note of that if you must grow you must be subjected to what the truth that's the only thing that can spring up growth in, growth in your spirit. All right. Another thing I want us to notice is this. The wisdom of words. Okay, okay. Let's, let's check the scripture first then I will explain this to us. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Now, not this word. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Look at what Paul is saying. He said, Christ has sent me to preach, but this preaching will not be with what? The wisdom of words. So there's something called the wisdom of words. Are you with me? What is the wisdom of words? The wisdom of words is in your ability to speak in an acceptable way. Nobody is offended, yet you are preaching. That's the wisdom of words. You can gather the saints, gather the sinners, and leave them for a long time. No growth. Eh? That's wisdom of words. When you are speaking by the wisdom of, of words, you are careful not to hurt the people. Hey, this one is smoking okay well it's not like smoking is too it's really bad like that but let's just be add what you are doing is the wisdom of words many of us must have had experiences like that when you go to places and you see the man speaking with the wisdom of words he is preaching yet everything is like seminar boring the spirit of god is not there your spirit is not cooking it's speaking by what the wisdom of words the wisdom of words is tied to eloquence. Are you there? So it can speak smoothly. The grammar is well articulated. The accent is good. But wisdom of words. No growth. But there is such a thing called utterance. All trance is sponsored by the wisdom of God. Are you get what I'm saying? If we exchange all trans for wisdom of words, what will happen? The cross will be made of what? No effect. Are you seeing what the scripture is saying? Let me read it to you again. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, yes, lest the cross of what? Of Christ should be made of what? None effect. Now look at this. This is the problem. Anytime you preach with the wisdom of words, you are rendering the cross ineffective. Do you know what that means? There will be no salvation because salvation is tied to the cross. So when you speak with the wisdom of words, the cross will not crush sin in the people. It is only the cross that can crush are you there? The cross is God's crushing instrument. God destroyed sin by the cross. So if you speak with the wisdom of words, you don't want people to be angry, you are sensitive not to touch their emotion, everybody is fine, both the good and the bad, you won't bring them into salvation. And if you don't bring them into salvation, the cross now is useless. You have rendered the cross impotent over their lives. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
Christians are better through the gospel. Whenever the gospel is pregnant, it will always bring forth what? Christians. So the gospel is like a female. Are you with me? Anytime the gospel is pregnant, what's the child? Christians. So you are a child of God because you were exposed to what? The gospel. You desire God because you have made contact with the gospel. Are you getting what I'm saying? We can check that in the scripture too. Christians are better through the what? Through the gospel. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Through what? Another thing I want us to notice this. The preacher of the gospel should live of the gospel. That's what the scripture says. I will show you. Let's see First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 14. Even so as the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. They should do what? Now what does it mean? Look at this. If you are preaching the gospel, God expects you to live of what? Of the gospel. Are you with me? What does it mean to live of the gospel? The one that is preaching the gospel is like a planter. Are you there? It's like one that is so, sowing what? A seed. Are you with me? It's like one that is what? It's like one that is sowing a seed. Now God expects that that seed you are sowing, you should also eat from the fruits. So when you begin to eat from the fruits of that seed you are sowing, it means you are living off the gospel. What does it mean? If you say don't lie, you should not also lie. Teach what you are doing. Are you the one saying? If you say be righteous, you too be righteous. If you say follow God, you too follow God. Don't do anything bad in the secret. You too don't do it. Are you there? There's nothing special about being a preacher. Every child of God is expected to what? To preach the gospel by nature. Every child of God is what? Is expected to preach the gospel by nature. So I'm preaching the gospel. I used to preach. There's nothing special about it. Naturally, as a child of God, you should what? Preach the gospel. Are you with me? Because of time, I may not be, you know, bringing up the Bible verses because we still have a lot of things to do today. Another thing I want us to notice this. The gospel is precious. Yet, it should be given out without a price tag. It should be given out without what? Yes. You don't need payment to preach. You don't need payment to preach. Don't abuse it. The man of God was saying something. I think I was watching it maybe yesterday. And my heart was bleeding. He shared experience how that they wanted to invite a preacher from, from the U.S. to come and you know, minister. I think this man said at that time, he was also in the U.S. preaching in the church of this man. So the governor of his state now called him and said, please, uh, we need, you know, we need, we want to do something in the state. So we want <clears throat> this preacher from the U.S. to come and preach. He now said, ah, you called at the right time. I'm currently in his church for a program. I want to minister in his church. He said, okay, don't worry, I'll speak to him for you. This is the man of God speaking to the governor in Nigeria. Now he spoke to he spoke to um he spoke to the to the minister. Well my governor will my governor will you know uh want you to come to Nigeria. You know, there are a lot of people that are expect you know, when you come, there are a lot of people that will be blessed, blah blah blah. The man said, Okay, no problem. I will speak with my secretary. After that, then the man said, Well, yes, yes, I have checked the date. 
I'm free now. All right, no problem. Uh, it's just um, $250,000. The man of God said he did not even give the governor a feedback. It was the governor that now called him. Are you with me? I said, what of what what of our discussion? The man said, Well, what the man is saying, I don't understand though. Because he wants to come and preach. What's the price tag? Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Even the governor could not afford it. He said, ah, what is he coming? A preaching of thirty five minutes. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Even the governor could not afford it. That is supposed to be a preacher. You shared another story of how a man of God also traveled from abroad, I think from the US too, came and organized uh, something like a minister's conference. Everybody were there, you know, ministers from different parts of the, the states gathered for the conference. Some of them, their shoes were destroyed, you know, shoes that were not kept, a lot of things. Some of them, their clothes was looking rough and tattered. But they came because they want to be blessed. The next thing the man of God did was then he began to preach and he said, he said, well, the Lord has led me to collect a seed. We are going to raise an altar for you in the U.S. Praying for you. So please write your prayer point and bring it. And he mentioned a particular amount. And everybody, they were, those that did not have went to borrow. Because they have promised that an altar will be raised for them in the U.S. while they go back. Those that did not have a good suit, they borrowed money. They just put in for the sacrifice because of the prayers. They said the money was so much that they have to put everything in their private jet. It was so heavy. Now, one of the, after that ministration, one of the, maybe the secretary. This was the man of God telling us now. He was saying it in the video. Say so one of the secretary have to resign from that ministry and say, I'm not working with this ministry again. Do you know what happened? After the program, the man of God gathered all the prayer requests and burnt them. He packed the money into the jet and he left. One of them now looked at him and said, Sir, you burnt this thing. He said, you are, you are a devil. You know the whites now? They are so bold. He's here that he says, Papa, Papa. Ma, sir, you are a devil. And the man looked at the preacher and said, this, this man is working in the ministry. He looked at the preacher and said, If I have my way, I would not journey with you in this jet. But I'm resigning immediately. That was how that person left that ministry. You know what the preacher said to him? Leave me with Jesus. Let Jesus judge me packed the money and went abroad. Their gospel is free. But the preacher has placed the price tag on it. That's an abuse. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is an abuse to sell what you got for free. If God gave you for free, people can honor you. Are you there? But don't place a what? A price tag on it. Before I come, the man of God himself shared his own personal experience. He said some years ago, he wanted to also invite a preacher from abroad too. And people were expecting, even the, the program has started. People were expecting. The program has started. The man said, yes, yes. All right. I'm in London now. I'll soon get to Nigeria. He now told his friend that connected him to call this man. Now this program, is, he has not come. The man said, well, you have to send the money first. The man said he sent part of the money. He said, no, no, no. The money has to be complete, you know, to fill the jets. And then he sent all the money, yet the man did not come. Some ministers, you invite them, they are coming with 18 intercessors. Just for your program. Oh. And you have to pay for their flights one after the other. It has become like that in the body of Christ. We got it for free, but we have what? Placed a tag. Can you say to yourself, I will not abuse the grace of God. In the name of Jesus. Another thing to notice is this. The gospel opens door 
to the faithful preacher. If you are faithful with the gospel, what happens? The gospel will open doors for you. Are you there? It can create a life-changing opportunity for you. There are several people who have been blessed by the Lord through what? The gospel. So if you are faithful in it, God has a way of what? Of rewarding your what? Your faithfulness. Another thing to notice this, the true gospel is of Christ. The true gospel is what? Is of Christ. Beware of another gospel. Another gospel is a move of something that looks like it, but not it. Are you there? It looks like the truth, but it is not what? The truth. I cannot continue this teaching. I think I need to round off here because if I continue, it will take a lot of our time. I will still have two more teachings to do. Praise the Lord. Can we pray to God and ask that the Lord will help us? Say, Father, I will not abuse your grace. I will not abuse your grace. In the name of Jesus. I will not abuse your grace. Help me, help me, O oh God. I will not abuse your grace. I will not abuse your grace. In the name of Jesus, I will not abuse your grace over me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I will not abuse your grace. I will not abuse your grace. In the name of Jesus, I will not abuse your grace. I will not mismanage divine resources. In the name of Jesus, I will not be a waster. In the name of Jesus, I will not abuse your grace. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Now look at me. Have you ever asked yourself this question? How will the world know about Jesus if you don't tell them? Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. Some people will never know until you say it. Are you with me? That's what happened with the utopian eunuch. Are you there? He was reading the Bible and he doesn't understand. And Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? He said, how will I understand? Because there's no one to what? To explain. There's no one to teach me. Say, Father, help me, Lord, to be faithful with the gift that you have given to me. In the name of Jesus. Can we make it a prayer? Lord, help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful with the gift that you have given to me. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful, O God. In the name of Jesus. Help me to be faithful, O God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can we rise to our feet? Let's rise to our feet. And let's hold hands. Let's just hold hands. Make sure you have a neighbor. Hold hands. We're going to pray and say, Father, 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 let your glory shine through the person I'm holding. In the name of Jesus, let your gospel be revealed through this person I'm holding. In the name of Jesus, can you begin to pray? Can you begin to pray? Let your glory shine through this person I'm holding. In the name of Jesus, let your way be made known. Let your path be clear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory shine through this person I'm holding. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory shine through this person I'm holding. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory shine. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory shine through this person I'm holding. In the name of Jesus, let your glory shine. Let your glory shine. Lord, let your glory shine. In the name of Jesus.